Okay, great. So we're talking about tendering and the procurement process, but just what does that take? Well, the methods, um, let's take a look at the process of supplying goods and services to the government that is done through a tendering process. Now, it is guided by the law. That is the Public Procurement and Disposal Act. Now, there are various methods of procurement, but let's look at three for now. The preferred method is open tendering, right? It's open to all bidders who feel competent to make a bid. Now, what happens is you buy tender documents, you fill them, you submit them, and the method obviously provides for maximum competition. Now, information on the tenders uh, is available, uh, available through this method is always available in a number of ways. Open tenders are advertised, as you see here, at least twice in a newspaper that has been in circulation for at least two years. Also, uh, there's information on the entity's website or any other conspicuous place that is reserved for um, ad purposes at the premises of the specific government entity. Now, this process takes a bit of a while, right? The tendering process is 21 days. Then you've got the evaluation process that takes more than a month, which involves the preliminary evaluation where you're checking the tender documents to see that they have met, you know, the basic guidelines and requirements. And then there is the technical evaluation, which is done within 30 days. And then, of course, the financial evaluation, which is done five days after that. Now, we also have the second method, which is um, the restricted tendering process. Now, before any entity uses this route, they must get approval from the tendering committee in writing. They have to give reasons for using this alternative method of procurement. And remember, it is also guided by the law, but for this you will find it in Section 73 of the Public Procurement and Disposal Act that says that this method should only be used when there is a specialized nature of goods or services to be procured and when those are limited to pre-qualified contractors. Also, when time and cost required to examine and evaluate the large number of tenders would be disproportionate to the value of goods or services to be procured. And it is also preferred when there's only a few known suppliers of the goods, works or services. That is one. Now, when we move to the next type of procurement method, which is the third one we're discussing here, and that is the process of direct procurement. Now, this also requires approval in writing from the tendering committee. It's covered under Section 74 of the Act. Now, this one is favoured when only one person can provide the goods or services, where there's no alternative for the goods or services, or when there is an urgent need for those goods and services. Now, of course, they must make sure that this is not used uh, to favour one particular company and when somebody is trying to avoid competition. Now, whatever the method um, of procurement or tendering that is used, the criteria remains the same. Let's take a look at the criteria for procurement now, what they will be taking a look at. There are some basic uh, tendering uh, criteria that will be used uh, to determine who gets it and who doesn't. The criteria is clearly spelled out in Section 31 of the Act. And these are just some of the things that we'll be looking at. Whether the person or company that's tendering has the necessary qualifications, capability, experience, resources, the equipment, and also the facilities to provide what it is they say they can do. They must also have the legal capacity to enter into a contract to procure. And importantly, they must not be insolvent. That means they must not be going broke. They must not be in receivership. They must not be bankrupt or in the process of being legally wound up or not subject to any legal proceedings of the same tender that they're bidding for. Now, there are also, of course, some exclusions uh, to some entities and individuals who are barred from tendering for government contracts. So, one, if you're an employee of the procuring entity, obviously you can cannot participate. If you're a member of a board or of any of the committees, that is the tendering procurement, the evaluation committee, the tender opening committee, you will not be allowed to bid for obvious reasons. Also, those who are excluded from this list are if you're a minister or you're a public servant or you're a member of a board or of a committee of any department that is appointed by the president or the minister or obviously we need to state if you are a relative of any of these people we have mentioned. The idea of course is to make sure that um, you don't have insider information. So those are the five things you need to know about the process of tendering for goods, services and works with government entities 
both national and county. That's the five.